Okay, you guys, you're going to find out real quick here that I am super picky when it comes to LinkedIn invitations. I'm just going to make it really, really clear. Do not send generic invitations asking people to join your network on LinkedIn. For all the time that we spend talking about being unique and being memorable, uh, promoting your personal brand, you are not going to do that if you just go the easy way or take the easy way and select connect when you want to reach out to someone and ask them to join your network on LinkedIn. No, nope, that's not going to do it. You need to be memorable. You need to build your brand. And this lesson is going to be about customizing your LinkedIn invitation. So here we go. Here's the truth. It's easy to just hit connect and send a generic invitation. Anyone can do it. It's not so easy. It takes time to compose a thoughtful, persuasive message that promotes the fact that there would be mutual benefit in the other individual joining your network, okay? I'm not gonna lie, it takes a little bit of time, but I will tell you, it gets easier the more that you're doing. Do it, excuse me. So why, why would you not wanna send out a meaningful, tailored invitation to convince someone to join you? Because anyone can send out a generic invitation. I delete the vast majority of the generic invitations that I get. Or when I ask the individual what their interest is, excuse me, what their interest is in connecting with me, if I don't hear back from them within a week, I delete them. Okay, so that tells me that they're not interested in a two-way networking relationship. They are interested in doing something for themselves, which is not cool. You don't want to be just anyone who can send out that generic message. You want to be memorable. Remember, sending out those generic LinkedIn invitations is just like throwing your business cards in the air. Walk into a room or go outside, take a stack of business cards and just toss them up. Nobody knows anything about you. Nobody knows the value they can bring to their relationship or their, to their work unless you send that memorable, customized invitation. People will appreciate it. And I, bet you the vast majority of them, the vast majority of them will accept and your network will begin to grow. So again, reach out to the people who are easy to connect with and send them those customized invitations. Even if you feel like you don't have to, do it. Get used to it. Become accustomed to it. Become skilled at the art or the craft of sending tailored invitations. So that absolutely, when you send one out, people are going to say, yeah, I want to connect. So when you're doing it on your phone, remember, do not select the connect button. Go to this little ellipsis here with the three dots. That is what's going to give you the option to personalize your invitation. When you're on a desktop, though, you will want to select connect. See, it's very different on your, on your phone or on your tablet or iPad. If you hit connect, it's just going to go straight to the individual. But on the desktop, select connect, and then it's going to prompt you to add a note. And that's when you have a pop-up that allows you to use 300 characters, 300 characters to describe why it is that you want to reach out to someone on now, I'm not going to play this video here. You have access to it uh, in your learning materials for this week. But basically, JT O'Donnell gives a reason for why you do not send generic invitations. And basically what it is is that people recognize that those who reach out with generic invitations are doing it simply because they need something. And JT O'Donnell says, hey, you can be candid, you can be authentic, you can be honest with someone and say, we've not met, but I'm really impressed by blank, whatever it is in your background, and I'm wondering if I could sit down and have a conversation about that. So this link here is live, it's a hyperlink, and you can select it, and basically what it will do is take you through these seven steps of being honest and authentic, tell them how you have recognized their profile, Maybe scroll through it, look for something that you have in common so that you can make that invitation genuine. Okay, so here's what you've got. You've got 
a customized LinkedIn invitation to me, to Amy O'Donnell, that's due May 31st by 11.59. You're gonna send that to me in LinkedIn, okay? So refer to your assignment requirements for details, but pretty much what you need to do is select my public profile URL, take a look at my profile, identify the kinds of information that might be interesting or intriguing to you or similar in your background. For example, here's a hint, we're all engaged in BUAD 3000. So what if you say something about that in order to get my attention? And then once you actually send out the invitation, I'm gonna give you 25 points provided it's a customized invitation, 25 completion points. And I'll provide you with some feedback on your message, on your request in LinkedIn. But if you send me a generic invitation, one where there's absolutely no message and you have no validation, no screenshot of the invitation that you composed, that's going to be a zero. So that's a pretty hard hit when you consider that all I'm doing with your colleagues is giving constructive feedback on the message and free 25 points. Okay. Now, some of the people that you really want to reach out to and get to know are our alumni. Alumni are warm contacts. They're interested in you. So here's the way you find alumni. Like most things, you start in the search box and when you get presented with this menu, go ahead and select skills. And then in the box, select the University of Toledo, type that in. And then you will be taking to UT web presence on LinkedIn. From there, select alumni. And then you're gonna start filtering start filtering down the types of candidates who you want to speak with. So you can do it by start and end year of their experience at UT. Or you could go ahead and search by a title or a keyword or a company. Then you get other options. What do they do? What field are they in now? What did they study? What was their major? You're going to see the skills that they've identified for themselves. This is also a requirement for you to identify the skills that you have. And then you'll also be able to see how you're connected, whether it's a first, second, or third degree connection. Once you put some of those filters in, you're going to see that your search results are going to be dramatically different. There were thousands and thousands and thousands of people until I started filtering down and then ended up with 35, excuse me, 34 alumni. The process of sending customized invitations is a little challenging at first, but all you really need to think is networking is and always will be a two-way street. It's never about what one person can do for the other, but what one another can do in order to advance that individual's career. 